Hello and welcome to this sped up version of the vintage cardstock over gold foil reflection card. Okay, we have a pretty big uh, reflection card here in the half page um, format. Eight and a half by five and a half. Okay, we're going to be using some hybrid black ink on this vintage paper. There's a lot of different types of inks that'll work on it, but um, I like the hybrid one quite a bit. Versifying Claire or something like a Brilliance ink will work on there pretty good too. What you, you're going for is um, some nice dark impressions on that type of paper. Okay, now we're going to use our Stazon um, type of ink because it will both um, make an imprint, dry, and adhere to this type of non-porous surface, okay? So the um, Stazon is a solvent style of ink. It's kind of like using a permanent marker type of ink on top of this foil, so no problem with the drying time. Um, but most importantly, it will stick and it, you know, adhere to it really well. You gotta kind of practice with your impressions because um, stamping on this type of foil can get a little slippery feeling. Okay, we're stamping um, a little bit more variation in that foreground with the reeds large here. And it just kind of gives a different look to that grass cluster. It's a little bit more depth within that foreground space. Okay, and we're taking a look at it there and see it kind of creates this little um, canal or pond, you might say. And I want to flank my uh, left and right edges with the oak branch here. It'll kind of frame off that bottom um, scene really nicely. Okay, just I'm just using a small portion of the oak branch. Okay, now we're stamping our main imagery on that top portion. And remember to switch back to the ink that'll work really well on that. I mean, you can use the stays on up there as well. Um, I tended to think that my hybrid would give me a little bit of a darker impression up there, but I don't know, the stays on would probably work really well too. What work, doesn't work up there too sometimes are dye-based inks because you're printing over the top of that uh, printer ink that's giving it that aged look. Okay, filling in with the sedge filler in between that little cottage and the background um, windmill. Adding some variation to the horizon line up there with a little bit more height here with the tree. And I'm trying to decide on whether or not to put in another um, tree in there because I want to put a moon or, I don't know, it could read as a sun too. But I'm going to have this orb in there. So I decide to go with a little bit of a, the tree right down below, like that. Okay, now time to flesh in our top area. And what I'm doing is I'm using some colored pencils that are roughly the same kind of tones as the vintage paper to make it kind of harmonize and blend with that background. So I'm kind of just pointing out uh, there's that kind of warmish brown up top there. So we can use some of that it's kind of like a sepia um, color and that warm brown tone and then black. You could just go with just all black and that would look fine too, but you know, since we have these different colors in the pencil, you might as well use them. Kind of deepening and developing the shadows a little bit more with the black. And notice that interior or the center area of that little meadow. There's some areas that are, that are remaining light, okay? Because so, I want some variation in that area, so I don't want to just color it all in with just a uniform application of value like that. Holding it up, seeing how it looks like, uh, seeing what it looks like in the re reflection area. And I decided, oh yeah, I want to go for a little bit more texture down there, so I'm using the Tiny Rock Small to add kind of a little bit more of a transition zone between the shore and the water with going with those um, kind of pebbly textures in the water. It gives the illusion that that water right next to the shore, shoreline, is more shallow so you can see the rocks in there. And I really like that. They, they stand out against the reflection in that mirrored area really well. It, it gives a 
kind of a little bit more of a three-dimensional look, and I've added it in the foreground as well. Okay, and I decide here, I like those reeds in the, uh, the foreground area on the foil, so let's go with a kind of a smaller application of them along that shoreline to frame off that area. Okay, our pigment ink moon. This is going to provide kind of a light source for our scene, and it adds some kind of variation in terms of value. We're adding something that's going to be fairly light um, against that uh, vintage paper background. And what I'm mentioning here on my live stream, as I was saying, I'm adding a little bit more of that white pigment ink t towards the top of that um, light source and a little bit less down below so it kind of transitions as opposed to just one uniform kind of application of white. Now that we've added that um, light source in there I can use my white pastel pencil to add a few highlights uh, within the uh, landscape and if I didn't have that white light source in there, I say light source because it could, it could be a sun or a moon, um, Adding these white highlights in there just doesn't really make sense, so you add that in there and you can add in that white pastel. Okay, the acrylic paint pen. I'm illuminating the interior of the house here. Well, the lighthouse, uh, not lighthouse, but the windmill here. So see, it kind of stands out a little bit more. And I'm looking at that house there and I was telling people, eh, should I add some interior lighting? And I decided to add um, kind of an interior light on the top floor of that house, like maybe, I don't know, bottom floor turned off the lights and they've gone upstairs to go to sleep or something like that, if that's a moonrise maybe. Adding some highlights down in that meadow grassy area, just a few dots. And it kind of gives a crisp little element, in addition to a light element down in that meadowy area, grassy area, grassy slope. Okay, adding in our focal point here. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do that or not, so on the live stream I said, okay, add or not. <laughs> All right, so I added my silhouette in there. And one thing with this um, stays on ink on the foil, sometimes I don't get a real crisp impression with a real solid image, so I just fill in with a Sharpie pen. And uh, real easy to do. Like I said, that stays on ink is really similar to Sharpie, so... If anything is missed, then just fill it in with a Sharpie pen. And look how great that looks in there. It looks so three-dimensional, and it really gave the uh, scene a strong focal point. Adding in a few more of those uh, little pebbly textures with a rock, uh, tiny rock small. And there you have the card right there. A really fun, um, uh, I don't know, real three-dimensional looking um, card. It's almost like a mini diorama, but all two-dimensional techniques. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.